Standing up in McKinney, this is According to Callus. <clears throat> Episode 484 coming to you on the 29th of August, 2023, and it is a Texas Tuesday. That means we're going to talk about Texas. Not necessarily Texit, but Texas. Now, for those of you who do follow events down in Austin, there is supposed to be a special session. Apparently, only one item is going to be on there and not the one that you want. It's what the governor wants. It's what the governor always wants or whoever is <laughs> paying the piper, if you will, because they get to call the tune. Needless to say, there are a number of different things that people want covered in a special session. For me, the most important thing, the most important thing is something to prevent more COVID crazy. Right? We we just don't need it. No more lockdowns, no more mandatory anything. It's done, it's over with. We're gonna quit playing games. We know it doesn't work. Move on. The state of Texas isn't gonna play anymore. Now that being said, I have an absolute certainty that none of that's going to happen. And not because I like it, not because I wanna be, you know, down in the dumps on this, just I don't see any way that happens. I have zero faith in the people that could make it happen, getting it done. And while we're talking about things that could get it done, yes, uh, the <clears throat> Senate, Senate trial Senate trial is coming up real quick here on uh, A.G. Paxton. Again, I don't have super strong feelings either way. Uh, those of us that live in Collin County like the guy. We'd like to keep him around. Uh, I am curious as to what's real and what's imagined. But we shall see. But the most important thing, and, and I want to make sure I say this now, just in case it ever gets lost in the ether later, there should not be two sets of rules. We know there are. I mean, we, we can look no further than D.C. and, quite frankly, Austin and pretty much every state capital and realize that there's two or three sets of rules, but there's not supposed to be. There's supposed to be equal justice, which justice is supposed to be equal, right? It's a friend of mine called it a redundant statement, right? Or a duplicative statement. That may be true, but from what we've observed since the time of my birth, and certainly the time of anybody that's older than me in their birth, that's not the way the world works. And it's not significantly better in these United States. I would like to believe it. I would like to encourage it. I would fight for it. But the reality is those that have the gold make the rules. There are at least two, if not three sets of rules, and you can get away with literally murder as long as you have access to the right people and the right controls. If you doubt me, then you aren't paying attention. And none of that is unique or different in Texas than any of the other of these United States. So let me ask you, what can we do about it? Well, for the moment, not a darn thing. You know, and people talk about, well, when the revolution comes, look, I'd like to believe there's going to be a revolution. I support a vote on Texas. I support Texas in theory, in practice, in a peaceful, orderly manner. I don't want a revolution. You don't want a revolution. Revolutions don't turn out well for normal people. If you don't believe me, Look at the Cultural Revolution under Mao. If you don't believe me, look at the Marxist Revolution under Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin. If you don't believe me, look at what happened in Germany. Not once, but twice at least. Look at what's happened in North Korea. It never works out well. Or, for that matter, France, right? France had a revolution and then tore up all of Europe while they were on it. There have been very few revolutions that ever had any positive outcome. And if they did, they were usually short-lived. We are the unique example of what happens if you hit a lot of dumb luck, in my opinion. Now, there are a lot of my friends out there that would say this is God-ordained, it's God-blessed. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't write that off. I, I suspect there was a lot of that involved. But at this point, if God doesn't punish our country, the statement is he needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah and... Honestly, I failed to see the uh, faulty reasoning in that logic. I think it's I think it's quite true. 
We've killed more unborn babies than probably anybody else. We tolerate and promote promiscuity and perversion of all sorts. We pretend it's normal. In fact, we now abuse and treat people poorly for, I don't know, just wanting norms, norms from 1980. And again, the the curious thing is nobody is advocating going out and stoning homosexuals, including myself. I don't think that's a good way to solve the issue. I don't know that there's a good way to solve the issue, but I'm fairly certain that's not going to work any better than promoting it, celebrating it, and parading it in front of young children. When I was younger, they used to call that grooming. They used to warn you about going around adults that wanted to be around children that didn't have children of their own or weren't already parents or perhaps grandparents. They used to tell you, stay away from that van with guy handing out candy. Stranger danger was a catchphrase from my childhood. Yet now, apparently, the stranger you are, the more likely you are to go read library books to them. In what world do we live in? It's upside down. But again, the special session could address some of these things that they passed up the idea to actually have gender appropriate, or let me rephrase that the proper sex in the proper locker rooms and proper bathrooms. No, no, no. We don't want to touch that. There's too much money involved in us. We need to keep our money flowing. Uh, they didn't want to stand by any of the principles, any of the platform planks. No, no, no. We're going to do this because there's something in it for us. Again, rules for thee. Not for we, right? You all have to do certain things because we created the rules, but we are not going to be held to the same standard. And if you don't believe me, just look at how they celebrate the perversion. They put special loopholes in to protect people from having to face their maker. Indeed, at least one of our state reps has made it his cause celeb to end the death penalty all the while claiming to be a good Baptist. Pretty sure the Bible is quite clear that there are several instances where it is permissible and a good thing to execute a criminal. Now I will tell you the application in these United States does make me a little queasy. I am a little concerned, particularly with some of the abuses in history gone past. I won't say that there haven't been things that, at the very least, would be claimed to be regrettable. And I could say a whole lot worse. But that being said, you can't throw out the punishment because some people don't behave. You don't make rules based on exceptions to the rule. The exceptions are there for the very purpose that they are the exception. But again, expect nobody to care because the rules are for thee, not for we. And as I look forward to this next year, we're going to have the uh, state convention, San Antonio, I believe. I'm looking forward to it. It's a return. Hadn't been there for, uh, I guess, four years, six years. I don't know. Depends how you're counting it. Uh, the last two were in Houston. And then after we're done in San Antonio, it'll come up back to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, I imagine. Given my choices, San Antonio is much cooler and nicer than Houston, in my opinion. But again... We're going to go there. We're going to spend an entire week crafting different priorities, making sure our principles line up, putting planks in the platform, putting out resolutions. We're going to do all this work. And then the legislature is going to show up in disregard and just do whatever the world they want. And here's the challenge. What do you do about it? How do you fix it? Well, I would suggest for starters, We need to start working with these people instead of hating on them. Now, look, some of them deserve our hate and our derision. I'll be the first to admit that. In fact, I'm among the first to call them out. But if they're marginally on our side, we need to treat them like that. We need to rally around them. We need to give them props. We need to encourage them to do the right thing. We need them to do the right thing. We need them to feel emboldened and protected, knowing that they can win their district without having to be dependent upon somebody else's money. We we need to quit fighting about the degrees of difference and focus on the destination. We need to focus on the things that we can win and the things we can get done. Now, granted, 
I'm as sad as anyone that it took eight years to get the quasi constitutional carry we got. And to be clear, it is a limited permitless carry. Light years better than what we started out with, but still not right. Still not constitutional carry. They can call it whatever they want, but it's not. But again, why get upset? It is so much better than what it once was and we'll keep working on it. But they got to win. They labeled it something and people think that's what they got. Just like they, they banned, you know, pornography in the school district. They banned CRT, but there's no enforcement mechanism. There's no way to come after the, the uh, school districts and the teachers that don't do what they're supposed to do. No, there's nothing unless and until there is. Now, our legislature is very good at a couple of different things. One is passing laws that mm, are inappropriate. Two, overstepping their bounds. Three, punting. And four, basically ignoring the people that send them there. (laughs) Now, that being said, this is not uncommon or unusual. All the legislatures do it, including our own Congress, or shall I say, especially our own Congress. It doesn't matter how great your congressman is, which mine's pretty great. It doesn't matter how good your senators are from the state of Texas that go to go to D.C. And ours are above average, especially when you add the two together. It doesn't matter. Because there's 98 other ones there that will (laughs) basically destroy anything those two would ever agree to work on to get done for the betterment of Texas. There are 434, I believe, other uh, congressmen that have their own agendas that will do everything they can to wipe out and destroy the agenda that we send ours with. That means we have to focus on Texas. What's best for Texas? What's best for North Texas? What's best for Collin County? What's better? What's best for McKinney? And yes, it is a little selfish, perhaps, It could be interpreted that way, but it's called priorities. Now, granted, I don't want to do something in McKinney that's going to damage my neighboring towns, whether it's Princeton, Frisco, Prosper, uh, Anna, Allen, Plano. I'm not wanting to do anything that's going to damage the neighboring cities, but if it slightly advantages us, well, of course, yes, that's what we want. Likewise, in Collin County, We're not going to necessarily look to do anything that would cause damage to our surrounding counties, except for maybe Dallas County. I don't think anybody's really in love with Dallas County right now. But I mean, there's Tarrant, there's Denton, uh, Cook, Grayson, no, Parker, I think, is on the other side, and uh, Hunt, and then Rockwell Counties, and I'm missing one. Sorry. Can't remember them all off the top of my head. But we, we don't want to do something detrimental to them, but if it slightly advantages us, sure, yeah, great. We support that. And it doesn't punish you, so it's a win-win. Yeah, let's do it. Likewise, the state of Texas. If we look at putting Texas first, well, no. Obviously, we don't want to cause harm or problems for New Mexico, Oklahoma, Colorado, Arkansas. I guess, nah, Missouri's not included. Uh, And uh, Louisiana, we'd rather work with them. We'd rather be on the same page. We want the similar outcome for all of us. We all want to gain and get ahead. But hey, if Texas gets a little bit better of deal by doing this than what we otherwise would, of course, we want to support that. So when you look at the grand scheme of things, would you rather have Oklahoma having our back or working against us? Would you rather have Louisiana and Arkansas having our back or working against us? Now, we're just going to assume for the sake of argument that New Mexico's horribly lost and will never, ever do anything to benefit Texas. But we can have the other three states. And if you want to include, you know, Colorado as being kind of ran off caddy corner, super close. Okay, fine. And I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well include Kansas, right? But the reality is it's much better to work with the states that neighbor you and do things that advantage the region. The whole idea of putting America first was, Hey, look, we don't dislike Mexico or Central America or Canada, but we need to consider our own circumstances first. We need to be concerned about our own people first. Yet that's not what we're doing. We're doing the exact opposite. And it's no different now in Texas. Indeed, we have our own governor that could and should be shutting down the border on his own. That could and should be closing down the colonia, right? The one that's down by Houston, where they're pumping hundreds of people there daily, or maybe it's thousands, who knows, 
Nobody really has an accurate number, but that's not good for Texas long term. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of, uh, we'll call them capitalists that want that free and cheap labor, right? They, they want that uneducated labor in there. Oh, 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 man, we can save a couple bucks per person. We can make a little bit more profit and forget the surrounding area. We get what we want. Okay, that's fantastic until it's not. Then, of course, the Democrats look at them as future voters. Well, maybe, maybe. Uh, But at a certain point, they're not going to care what you have to say either. They're going to align with their own people, their own interests. So if we're Texas and we've got a lot of Tejanos and transplants, the Tejanos and the transplants don't necessarily get along. But what if they figure out a way to get along? What if we what if we look at a way to partner with Mexico to deal with their problems? Right. They have natural resources, but they're run by cartels. They they have a a weak. mm, Let's call it. Tenuous government situation, but what if they had backup? What if they had a good partner, the gringos to the north, right? What if we looked at this as a win-win situation? What if we approached each other as equals? What if we worked at a solution that we both benefit? But I'm afraid we're not allowed to do that. Why? Because, well, one, the feds won't do let us do it. And two, our governor doesn't think that way. Our, go- our governor is not really concerned about that. Some have said that he is a globalist at heart, and that may be true. Certainly, there's evidence to suggest that's the case. But yet, he's still the governor. We got to work with what's there. We got to encourage him to do the right thing. We got to have his back. We got to force him to be pro Texas, which on its face sounds ridiculous and crazy that you have to force the leader of your state to actually be pro your state. But that's the world we live in, folks. Let's not pretend otherwise. We have limited success in the legislature. We maybe get our governor to do things that we want him to do on occasion. The only option we have is to become ungovernable. And I'm not sure that everybody's prepared for that. I mean, how many of you want to go back to the days without electricity? Readily available and easy and cheap to get. Not me. How many want to go back to a time where the roads weren't, well, at least marginally kept up to where you could travel across the state in a reasonable period of time in a relatively safe manner? Not me. I don't want to go to back to something like that. How many of you like the idea that you can go to a gas station and get gas for, well, now it's too much money, but still it's readily available. It's there. It's not terribly expensive. It's not cheap. Do you, do you want to go back to where it's extremely expensive to where it's not readily available and where you can't travel? No, I don't want that either. So we've got to be grateful for what we have, but we should and can demand more, right? We got to defend our liberties. We got to, we got to get more protection for personal people, right? Your personal rights, your independent rights, your personal protections. If you're in your home and you own your home, Why in the world would you allow anybody to come in without a warrant? But apparently that happens. If you're in your own car driving down the road, why would you agree to let them search your car? Well, I have nothing to hide. Sure you don't until they find something. Or, well, I know this would never happen in Collin County because, you know, Collin County is the best place in the whole world to live. And it is to a degree. But there are other places where there are shady people and they do shady things. Why would you set yourself up? Why would you allow yourself to be manipulated? Yet it happens all the time. We're supposed to be on the same team, but we're really not. The the people that are supposed to lead us, they abuse us. They look at us as an impediment to their next great accomplishment. If you doubt me, go to East Texas. Look at what they're going to do to those people out there. Just so Dallas can have a little bit more water. Yeah, I know we're not supposed to talk about it. Yes, that's unpleasant. But at least, hey, in Texas, we quit murdering babies before they're born. Did we? You know, the law we wrote had some mm, sticky, unintended consequences because people that wrote the law didn't consider what happens when you change the law. They didn't consider that you're creating 
mm, let's call it gray areas that can be very, very detrimental to different people. So you got to be real careful what you wish for. Now, in no way, shape, or form would I advocate or protect the idea that you should be able to go kill your baby in the womb, but there are exceptions and nobody considered the exceptions and you have to go through a long drawn out process and people risk the penalty of prison or gigantic fines and they should if they were legitimately doing a bad thing. But some of this stuff is not that easy, but nobody wants to consider that. I mean, for me personally, it's real easy to say, yes, everybody should be able to have access to firearms. Everybody should carry firearms. I don't care if they're concealed or unconcealed. Everywhere they go, they should be packing something. Yeah, that's real That's real easy to say. But as a practical matter, you know, you got to respect private property rights. It's a practical matter. You got to deal with the fact that some places probably not a really good idea to be carrying something unless there's a number of you together that are friends that you could actually maintain control of your weapons. Hmm. But again, Some of this is just being smarter than your circumstances, which again, appears to be a challenge a lot. It's real easy to be an absolutist. Been there, done that. 15 t-shirts. But the reality is life isn't that easy. It doesn't always boil down to the market. Not always. But it is something we have to remember that individual rights are supposed to be of prime concern. The smallest minority is the individual. And if you're going to protect minority rights, you have to protect individual rights. If you're not going to protect individual rights, then quit the facade of having liberty. Quit the facade of respecting individual liberty. Because you don't. If you're not willing to protect individual rights, if you're not willing to step back and say, yeah, we don't have the authority to do that. If you're not willing to understand that there are restrictions on things you do and which things you say when you are within the sphere of government. If you, if you don't know any limitations, you're the problem. Which brings us back to the idea of the revolution. And again, I, I'm not a fan. I, I don't want to experience a revolution, a peaceful separation, maybe directed independence, In a transitional way, absolutely. Partnership with neighboring states or countries, great, fantastic. But who's going to do that? Who's going to make sure that both sides honor it? I mean, as it is right now, the United, these United States does not have the best reputation with the rest of the world. Now, most of the rest of the world actually likes Americans to the degree that we come there, we spend money, we protect them. But when that ends, do you think they're going to be excited to see us? I don't. I think they're going to be about done with us. They tolerate us. Got to think about that. Think about the person that you're least friendly with, but you would still consider an acquaintance. Do you look forward to seeing them? Do you look forward to spending time with them? I already know the answer. You don't. Nobody really does. I mean, you tolerate them. You you, do, you want to keep him as a friend because you don't want him to be an enemy. We all got it, right? But the reality is you'd rather not do it. You you don't necessarily want to invest that time. You don't want to invest that effort. But you rationalized it out that better to do this than the other alternative. Okay. So maybe that's true. May, maybe you've got a friend like that. Maybe you have more than one like that. Got to ask yourself. At what point do you just say, yeah, it's not worth the effort. And that's where we're at with these United States. At what point is it worth dealing with these other states that are dragging us down, that are impeding our rights, that are (laughs) putting us further in debt, that are creating greater risks? Well, you doubt me? Look no further than New Mexico, Arizona, California, Oregon, Washington. Oh, need more? How about Virginia? Sadly, North Carolina is not far behind. Oh, well, Delaware. Oh, you need more? Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Vermont, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Can't forget Massachusetts. And then, of course, let's lump in Illinois. These are all the states that are dragging us down. 
They're the states that are impeding growth of liberty. They're the states that are preventing us from healing. It's, it's certainly ironic to me to hear New York whine because they've got a certain amount of migrants that were bussed there by our governor. Whether you thought it was a good idea or not, that's what they did. But we got like 10 times that amount being dumped across our border every day and we do nothing. Nobody cares. But it's New York. Cry me a river, baby. You know, when I was a kid, we used to talk about the best thing that could ever happen to America is there was a giant earthquake and California fell off into the ocean. I got to say, a section of that falling off into the ocean would not be the greatest loss in the United States history. But if we're at it, can we just get like a chunk of New York to go along with it too? Maybe New Jersey. I mean, I mean, if we're if we're going to wish ill on people and things and speculate on what might happen. Well, I mean, that's the direction I'd like to go. I mean, think about it. Maybe the Tricoms would do us a solid if they were to nuke New York, DC, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and, uh, you know, any number of other major cities, they'd be doing us a solid. I'm pretty sure they're not going to do it though. I'm pretty sure they won't need to. I'm pretty sure the number of people they smuggle over in here that are going to take over and be in positions of power, they're going to find a way to turn it all against us. It'll be you and I as patriots that are running to the ground. It'll be you and I that are rounded up. It'll be you and I that get to live the reenactment of Red Dawn 40 years removed. It's a scary situation. And maybe it's a little woo-woo. Maybe it's a little conspiracy. I, I don't know. I mean... Again, you just have to pay attention, watch the news, and you got to wonder what in the world's going on. How else do you explain what it is? So yeah, it's it's wild imagination, maybe. Maybe it's overstepping, but is it? I mean, consider this maybe the broken clock right now. Say, Callus, you get this so wrong, but maybe I don't know. One out of sixty items is right. Right? Maybe could be. Maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, one out of 12 items is right. Could be, maybe, don't know, we'll see. But the reality is none of this should change how we live our lives. We get up, we take care of our family, we look after our community, we take care of business, we go home, we look after the greater community, we spend time in... Texas. We defend Texas. We do it by making our families stronger, our community stronger, our churches stronger. Because strong individuals bring about a strong Texas. If you want to make a difference, if you want to hold the line, if you want to make sure that Texas is there for the next millennia, okay, fine. The next century, you got to do it and do it now. And with that, this has been According to Callus, and I will see you on the other side.